Hello, everyone. My name is Peter Bross. I'm a Forge developer advocate. And in this lightning talk, I'm going to share with you a couple of tips and tricks to turn your Forge Viewer application into a configurator. Now, before we get started, let me quickly mention, if there are any statements about the future of the Autodesk platform or its products, these are not guarantees. All right, so what's the objective of this lightning talk? Many customers come to us asking for ways to turn their Forge Viewer-based application into a sort of a configurator where they can drag and drop objects, change their colors, change their size, etc. That's what we're going to be talking about here. We're not going to be talking about the Forge Design Automation Service, which is one of the Forge services that can be used to provide configuration-like functionality on the server side. The current state of affairs is this. Forge Viewer is, well, a viewer, but it does provide a couple of features that might help. For example, it allows you to aggregate multiple models with custom transformations. It allows you to apply custom transformations or materials to individual geometry fragments of your models. And the viewer APIs also allow you to compute bounding boxes and do ray intersections in your scenes, as well as add custom, completely custom 3GS geometry to your models. In order to aggregate multiple models, all you need to do is pass a couple extra options to the standard low document node method on the viewer object. If you set the keep current models property to true, this will make sure that all the previously loaded models will remain in the viewer as you're loading the new model. If you set the preserve view to true, you'll make sure that the camera remains the same even as you're loading a new model that may potentially have a different default camera settings. And you can also set custom placement transformation matrix, global offset, or you can also specify apply scaling units. Um, this final property is used to make sure that different models that may be coming with different units all use the same unit system. So for example, if you set the apply scaling property to meters, all the, all the loaded models will be loaded and scaled appropriately to fit in the meter-based coordinate system. And each instance of the loaded model also allows you to get its transformation matrix or customize it during runtime. So you can move models around even after they've been loaded. In order to transform individual geometry fragments of your models, what you want to do is obtain the instance tree of your model and something we call the fragment list. The instance tree can then be used to enumerate all the fragments associated with a specific object ID. And then using the fragment object, fragment list object, you can, you, you can call the update and in transform method to apply custom scale, rotation, and translation to those specific fragments. Be careful though, because the same method is used by other tools that manipulate the position and transformations of fragments, such as the explode tool. You can also create completely custom instances of three dot material classes or shaders. Um, all you need to do is register them with the viewer, with the viewer's material manager. And then you can simply use the instance tree and fragment list once again to enumerate all the fragments for a specific object ID and apply the new material using the set material method. In order to compute bounding boxes of your objects, which might also be helpful in some cases, what you want to do is, again, retrieve the fragment list object and call the get world bounds on it to retrieve the, bound, the bounding box in the world coordinate system for a specific fragment ID. And if you want to compute hit test intersection for a ray coming from the, from the camera, through a specific XY position on the canvas, for example, where your user clicked, you can use the hit test method on the viewer object. Here, in this case, just be careful, the XY coordinates must be the distance in pixels from the top left corner of the viewer canvas element. And finally, you can also create completely custom geometry by creating new instances of the three dot mesh object and inserting it into the scene in one of the two ways, either as an overlay using the overlay manager in the viewer, that's the viewer.overlays property, or by creating a pretty much new forge model using the built in viewer extension called builder. All right. If you're interested in other samples, we do have a couple of them on GitHub, so feel free to check them out. 
Or if you're getting started with Forge, here's a couple more resources to help you get started. And we also encourage you to check, check out some of the other Forge events during the Autodesk University 2021. And with that, I thank you for your attention and I wish you good luck with your configurators. Thank you.